Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're having a very good day. So for today's review, I'm here to talk about Lock and Key, written by Joe Hill and illustrated by Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez. I'll be talking about Volume 1, Welcome to Lovecraft, Volume 2, Head Games, Volume 3, Crown of Shadows. And you guys know I hauled these three volumes in my October book haul, but because I finished these so quickly, I had to go back to the comic book store and get the latest two volumes. I just had to. It was a must. So I know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got volume four and this is Keys to the Kingdom and the latest volume that's out right now is Clockworks and this is volume number five. I believe volume six is the last one which will be coming out next year. Correct me if I'm wrong. It would be amazing if there were more volumes but how the stories are progressing and things are coming to a head and I believe it's ending soon which will be crazy but such a good story. Oh my goodness. If you're not familiar with the story of Lock and Key. The story follows the Lock family, mainly Tyler, Kinsey, and Bodie, the three children, and through horrendous events and circumstances, their family move into Key House, which is owned by the family. And so within Key House, there are these different keys that are able to open certain doors. These keys have very magical abilities and powers, and they're able to transform a person. And I do not want to get into the specifics of these transformations transformations because that would be spoiling certain aspects of the story but they're pretty cool and so once the Locke family move into Key House that's basically where the story takes off. Let's talk about the characters of Locke and Key. One of my favorite aspects of these graphic novels. I pretty much love every aspect of these graphic novels but one of them of course are the characters. I thought the characters were portrayed very realistically. Of course we have the Locke family, the Locke kids. We have Tyler, Kinsey, and Bodie and I thought they were fantastic. Tyler, he is the oldest sibling out of the three. After the events and circumstances that happen in volume one, we really get to see Tyler's character, how fragile he is. He's erect. He's quite sensitive during this time. But I love his progression as a character as we move forward into the story and his character really grows on me. The next oldest sibling, we have Kinsey. She is awesome as well. She's a flawed character, but she's a very loving sister. She really cares for Tyler and Bodhi so much. What I really love about Kinsey's character is that she knows who she is. So that really comes through throughout the graphic novel. And of course the youngest sibling, we have Bodhi Locke. He is of course my favorite character. He is so amazing. Bodhi's character is very open-minded. He's very honest. Bodhi definitely reminds me of Calvin in Calvin and Hobbes. And yes, that is because of this art homage that Gabriel Rodriguez does in one of the volumes. Next, let's talk about the antagonist. You know, the main antagonist, he's a handsome, manipulative bastard. He's one of those antagonists. The antagonist will definitely reach any lengths to achieve his goal. So it's quite intense and pretty horrifying how he goes about achieving his goals. It's pretty gory and graphic and crazy. He's a bad motherfucker he is. So overall I really enjoyed reading about all of these characters. There's a diverse set of characters throughout the graphic novel series. This is just the tip of the iceberg people. I just love how realistic they're portrayed and the dynamics between each of the characters as well. Especially the Lock kids. Their sibling relationship is fantastic. I love how they give shit to each other but they still love each other very very much. Uh, same with the sibling and parent relationship. I think it's really interesting to see how that goes all about and the friendship relationship and the romantic relationship. So overall, well done. All right, next guys, let's talk about the plot of Lock and Key. My overall impressions of the Lock and Key series, it's cool, it's imaginative. The story is very well paced. It's very dark and disturbing. There's a lot of adventurous aspects of the story as well. The first three volumes introduces the characters. It also, of course, introduces the magic of Key House and of course the keys. And I was super excited once that aspect of the story was introduced. It was so dark and creepy. The first three volumes also establishes the antagonist, but you're not too sure quite yet what the motives of the main antagonist is. But in the next two volumes, volumes four and five, we really get to see what the main antagonist is up to, why he's doing what he's doing. And I really love that. In volume five, we really get to see the backstory of the characters in the past, which is really great. And the history 
history of the keys as well and how all that came about so I thought it's a well-rounded story overall and the writing is fantastic I'll keep it short and simple it's really smart witty and funny I laughed quite a bit throughout the graphic novel series so I thought that was really great and of course the art by Gabriel Rodriguez I absolutely adored as well full color great line art what I really adored about the art is the amount of detail in the expressions of the characters as well as their environments and settings especially certain two-page spreads where we get to see certain things I'm being vague again, but the amount of detail within the graphic novel is fantastic. I really like the style. It's really great. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to rate the overall series so far, volumes one to five. Five stars out of five. I really enjoyed it. There's nothing more I really could want from it. I'm so sad that each of them is so short. I read them like in an hour or so. That's too short, too short. So maybe you'll want to wait till the last volume is out so you can read everything all together and you don't have to wait for the next volume like I am. And Danny Marks, he pointed out this to me. I wouldn't have known unless someone said something. He showed me the pilot trailer to Lock and Key. It was supposed to be a show on Fox, but it never panned out. And I will leave a link to that in the description box below so you can check it out. So that's my non-spoiler graphic novel review of Lock and Key. Definitely must read. You have to check it out. I'm going to get into the spoilers. Spoiler alert, there's going to be some spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. All right, let's talk get into it. So the first thing I kind of want to talk about really briefly and I want to know your thoughts. What did you guys think about Kinsey and Tyler showing the keys to their friends? And Bodhi eventually showed the keys to his friend as well. But what did you guys think of that? I thought it was pretty crazy. It's like too soon. Don't show them yet. It's really weird. I guess I'm so used to uh, main characters hiding that part of themselves from other people. Like you don't show normal people these crazy magical things because they'll get freaked out. But, you know, Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez, they're not following the standard whatnot. So it was really interesting to see, actually, um, normal people, you know, muggles reacting to all this magic and craziness. I don't know, let me know your thoughts about keys. If you had these keys, would you show them to your friends or would you keep Maybe because I'm over 18, maybe that's the adult mindset. You want to keep this power to yourself. That's why the rules are in place that you lose memory of using these keys once you turn 18 because you just go power hungry on all this power. That's probably... Okay, maybe I answered my own question, but let me know your thoughts. Next, guys, I want to talk about Sam Wells. He's such a creep and a jerk. Well, you know, initially at first, he's the go-to hate on guy. You do not like Sam Wells, but after reading his backstory and how rough he had it growing up, you know, that sympathy and empathy starts seeping in. But yeah, I still have the heebie-jeebies about Sam Wells. And let's talk about Rufus. He is adorbs. I really adore Rufus. How he speaks through his action figures and his toys is amazing. How the head key won't work on Rufus. So I thought that was really cool. And so I'm really interested as well to see if his character plays a big role in the next volume and ugh, Zach let's talk about Zach now that handsome manipulative bastard I totally thought he was Voldemort initially I thought he was always evil and you know cruel and just horrible person but after reading volume 5 and finding out that he was actually a good person and it was all because of that crazy demon that you know latched onto Lucas and made him the way he is now that turned him evil and things. So it was really cool to see his backstory as well as the backstory of Rendell and all of their other friends as well. So I thought that was really cool. And lastly guys, we have to talk about the keys, the amazing keys. What would we do with the keys? What our favorite keys are? Of course, the Anywhere key is freaking fantastic. Probably my go-to key, I would have that on my keychain. Of course, the catch is you have to know where you're going, you have to see where you're going. So that's the only catch, but hey, there's the internet. There's so many photos of anything. Go to a cafe in Paris, it would all be restaurants. I would be going to a lot of restaurants all over the world. 
Anyways, the Anywhere key is amazing. The Head key is amazing as well. Uh, what I loved about the Head key in the graphic novels was how certain characters would interpret thoughts. And it was really cool to see Gabriel Rodriguez illustrate what certain things would look like and how certain characters would remember certain things. So I really liked the Head key and it was pretty freaky. I think definitely most helpful. I would definitely use it. Come on. I would definitely use it for instructional things like cooking, fixing things, doing things in general. <laughs> the ghost key, like I said before, it's very cool yet very disturbing. Seeing your corpse <laughs> um, at the edge of the doorway there, that would freak me out. The gender key is freaking fantastic, would be a lot of fun. Definitely would be cool to do some, you know, social experiments most likely. So I think that would be really great. The giant key. I don't see really the practicality of the giant key unless you're fighting something mm -hmm. or do I don't know I don't see the practicality in the giant key the animal key is pretty cool the mending key is freaking fantastic also I love to have that come on now and the angel key having wings that would be fun too let me know in the comments below what your favorite key is anyways that is everything guys I hope you enjoyed this video I will talk to you later have a very good one bye